Yo, what's up guys? You're back with your man Tech Nick, your go-to guy for videos on the latest tech. Now today, it's all about the latest tech once again, since these two beasts here on my left, the Nubia Red Magic 3 and the Lenovo Z6 Pro have just released in the past week. We then have the Xiaomi Mi 9 to our right middle over here, and on the far right we have the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. All of these devices are running the latest 7 nanometer Snapdragon 855 chipset. Yes, the Samsung is indeed an 855 as well, since it comes straight from China and the only additions to include the Snapdragon 855 chipset are in the US and the Chinese markets alike. All of these phones have been paired with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage and I have not put any optimizations on for either of them though I will indeed put that wonderful fan on the Nubia Red Magic 3 since it is one of the first in the world to actually include an active fan inside of their phone for better cooling. So we'll have to see how that stacks up. It's also paired with a water cooling pipe with actual liquid in it. And then we also have a liquid pipe inside here, though it is more of a copper pipe inside the Lenovo Z6 Pro. And in the other two devices, there is no form of other cooling other than just passive cooling there guys. The Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus does indeed have a higher resolution than the other phone but I have indeed gone ahead and set it to Full HD Plus to keep things as even as possible in this test. This is Technic, I hope that you enjoy this video and without further ado, let's go! Just before we get going here guys, I just want to touch on a couple of things. All of the brightness have been put to the max on all of these devices. I have also disabled pretty much everything except for the Wi-Fi on each and every device. And I have also cleared the data on all of the Antutu Bench apps so that they are as even as possible. I have done about five or six tests here and usually I would do two or three tests on the video alone. But this time we're just going to do one test and I'm going to go ahead and talk to you guys about this range of wonderful devices here. All of these Antutu Benchmark versions are exactly the same at 7.3. Though the latest one that I could get on the Lenovo Z6 Pro is indeed 7.2.9 So I'm not sure if that's gonna make much of a difference here But before we get going I just want to take the Nubia right over here quick and just show you guys that we can now go ahead and Flick this gaming switch on since it is now up and running and then at the bottom You can see that the fan is now on now the fan pulls air through the back over here and transmits air Through the side of the phone over here and if you maybe I can let you guys hear this a bit So that is indeed the fan. I'll be keeping it on to see how cool things are in the Nubia. I'm sure you guys would be interested to see on how that plays out at the end of the test once we review some of the temps that all of these phones have. So I'm gonna try go ahead and test all of these phones at the exact same time and see how long they all go. Three, two, one. I know that there is no huge difference here when it comes to time and though it doesn't really matter but it'll be interesting to see which ones are further ahead than the others. So the main reason I'm going ahead and doing this test, just make sure that that fan is on over there, is that I'm really excited to see how these two beasts of a phone on the left do perform. I have done some Antutu runs on these two by myself at home and I have been very impressed with them, especially the Xiaomi Mi 9. The S10 Plus seems to fall a little bit short but nevertheless still gets a great score. Definitely better than what you currently see from Kirin on the Kirin 980 chipset which will thankfully be bringing us a new one at the end of the year, probably the Kirin 990. Now all of these are 7 nanometer chips so they do have better battery efficiency but they also do have much better performance as opposed to the predecessor Snapdragon 845. We're talking about around a 30% increase there since those devices were getting around I would say 245 to 270 on on the N22 benchmark so that score is okay I'm talking about thousands over here but now we have passed the 300,000 benchmark and I'm really excited to see how these phones stack up you can see that the Xiaomi is a little bit quicker over here off the go ahead and the two phones in the middle do indeed have a notch where the two on the left and right don't have a notch well the Samsung Galaxy S10 plus does indeed have that wonderful little hole punch notch style design and the Nubia Magic 3 Red Magic 3 has no notch of any form since it actually has borders on the top and bottom to give you that nice little feeling when you are playing games so that you don't land up touching the screen since it is indeed marketed as a gaming phone and is trading blows with the likes of the Xiaomi Black Shark 2. So that's its competition at the moment, not really these, but it'll be really interesting to see how it stacks up. And I know that the Black Shark 2 does have similar performance to the Xiaomi Mi 9, other than the little triggers that you have over there as well. But this does indeed also have the triggers. Guys, the Nubia is a great phone and I did just get it, but I must say one thing for sure though, all of the Chinese phones that I do get here, I can easily just throw a Google Play Store APK on, get all the Google apps running nice and smooth, and I have no issues with them whatsoever. Though when it comes to the Nubia Red Magic 3, 
something that they do with their software there's absolutely no way that you could get the play store to run let alone any google apps of any sort or even be able to sign into something such as youtube which you guys are currently watching on now now I'm not really sure the reason on that. I guess it has to do with security, but it is actually kind of strange since phones like the Lenovo over here and the Xiaomi, the Xiaomi takes a while to hit the global markets and the Lenovo doesn't even see global markets, but the Red Magic phones always seem to hit global markets. So as soon as that global market phone hits, you guys, if you're interested in it, I would suggest waiting for the global edition. And once it does indeed jump to that point, I will be putting the global firmware on the Nubia Red Magic 3 since I do indeed want all of those Google apps right now if you guys are too pressed and you cannot wait and you are beyond impatient and this phone is just the bee's knees then I suggest that you go ahead and buy it guys you can indeed sideload it with something that is called our play or G play space now what that pretty much do is it has a separate Google Play icon but then all of the apps that you download from the Play Store are within an app so you have to go into the our app or the G play space app and then you have to open up your Google Apps from within there now the good thing I can tell you is that apps that aren't Google Apps such as Facebook and Instagram Instagram, you can indeed APK on your Nubia Magic Red Magic 3 and you can use them as you usually would it doesn't kick them it doesn't do anything it's just something with Google Apps here guys which kind of sucks because most things that I do on phones does all the way come down to Google Apps for sure especially when uploading videos on YouTube and now that's another thing that I want to talk about I know that you guys are always amped to see my battery drain test it's gonna be really hard for me to show one on the Nubia so if you guys are keen to see a battery drain test between all of these beasts over here let me know including the p30 pro since that's not kind of relevant in this test since it's an older like chipset i would say i mean it's seven nanometer but it's it's not 2019 seven nanometer technology it is a bit slower than these but in speed tests i mean it's definitely different though when it comes to benchmark tests it is quite a bit behind so it's kind of pointless testing in this video where it's not pointless though is in those wonderful battery drain tests that I have so if you guys are keen to see all of these phones go up against each other in a battery drain test even though the Nubia will have side loaded apps within that Outplay or Gplay space app then let me know if that would bother you or if I have to wait for a global ROM to include this in the test nevertheless I do want to test out this wonderful Lenovo Z6 Pro in a battery drain test since the Lenovo Z5 Pro that I previously had on my channel did so well with a 3350 milliampere battery it actually hit the likes of the crazy huge Huawei Mate 20X with a whopping 5000 milliampere battery and it literally came in first place with it in crazy seven hours 10 minutes I think it was and it was really impressive screen on time and now this has a 4000 milliampere battery and a more efficient 7 nanometer chipset since I had a mid-range in the last one that is a 10 nanometer chipset so this should perform really well if it comes down to its predecessor on the left here when it comes to battery we have a huge 5000 milliampere battery with the Nubia Red Magic 2 and then we have a 3300 milliampere battery on the Xiaomi Mi 9 and of course a 4100 milliampere battery on the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus now when it comes to batteries and performance they do kind of go hand in hand since once your battery starts running low the performance starts to take a hit now most of these do have some pretty great performance modes in them other than I would say the Lenovo Z6 Pro and the Xiaomi which has indeed scrapped that you used to have performance mode on it but you no longer do with the Nubia you obviously have that game space which then just ups everything and then when it comes to the S10 Plus the only performance mode we have actually just increases or decreases the brightness and the resolution so that kind of sucks but I mean when you do look at the Samsung screen over here guys you could just see how damn gorgeous it is not just those curves but there are absolutely no bezels whatsoever and there are very minimal bezels on the two phones over here though you cannot kill the notch in certain apps and actually most apps for that matter so when you do decide to game you're not going to be able to get that screen real estate with the notch there but then again it's not really the end of the world the only crappy thing about it is that they do not round the edges over there when it does take that notch away so you get that squared look on the edges over here and the round look over here as well so now all of these phones are indeed packing 8 gigs of RAM and the Nubia can indeed go up to 12 gigs of RAM which is great and the Lenovo Z6 Pro can as well the Xiaomi do does have a slightly better edition where you can get 10 gigs of RAM but I mean 8 gigs of RAM is more than enough if you ask me you guys especially paired with this crazy Snapdragon 855 chipset that we have in here and that 7 nanometer technology just does wonders when it comes to battery life I must say though that with the Kirin 980 chipset which is indeed also 7 nanometers I've never quite found a battery quite like the Huawei Mate 20 Pro and the Huawei P30 Pro which I've also been using as my daily driver okay guys so we've hit over here the Nubia has a ridiculous score guys of 398,997 almost 
400,000 points on an N22 bench run, guys. That is ridiculous. In first place, we have this wonderful Nubia with a crazy score of close to 400,000. I must say that this phone has really impressed me here, guys. And I must say, I'm really amped to use this phone as my daily driver as soon as I can get access to all those Google apps. Then in second place, we have the Xiaomi Mi 9 with not too far off. I guess you could kind of say almost 20% difference between this and the Nubia. So it is kind of far off. It's quite a big jump considering they're using the same chipset and the same amount of RAM in these two versions over here, but it does a pretty good score of 375,000. And then we have the Lenovo Z6 Pro here, which I mean, didn't do terrible, though Lenovo did lie to us, so it is slightly disappointing. We didn't hit that 400K mark over there, but it definitely did do better than last place, which is the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. And though this phone costs double any of these phones on the table, you could buy two of these, or maybe all three of them for the same price as the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, gets that 355K score, which is not necessarily impressive, but guys, you're not gonna notice much of a difference using these phones as your daily drivers, though you might see a little bit of a difference in speed tests. And talking about speed tests, I will be doing a speed test between these two phones extremely soon, guys. So keep an eye out on my channel between the Z6 Pro and the Xiaomi Mi 9, because I'm really interested to see how they stack up. Their scores are not too far apart here, guys. Now, before I let you guys go, I just wanna go ahead and check out the temperatures of these devices, just to let you guys know my thoughts on that and the raw stats that we do indeed have over here. So on our left, which should indeed be our coolest phone of the bunch, we have our battery temperature at 33.5 degrees Celsius on the Nubia, which is brilliant, but only 0.2% hotter, which is on the Lenovo Z6 Pro, though it does indeed have a heat pipe in it as well at 33.7 degrees Celsius, and then we have the Xiaomi with 35.7 degrees Celsius, and the coolest, which is really surprising on the battery side of things, is this, the 90, the 34 degrees Celsius on the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, guys. It is doing really well here, and though those fans are kicking in here, you can see that these two are definitely the coolest of the bunch over here, guys. And you can see the Nubia is starting to get slightly cooler with that crazy wicked fan over there. Now, jumping onto CPU side of things, we can see that the Nubia has 37 degrees, and the, the Lenovo Z6 Pro is dropping even more, 35 degrees Celsius over there, which is really impressive, guys. And then we're gonna go over to the Xiaomi Mi 9 with a 38, de 37 degrees now, Celsius. Celsius, and the Galaxy S10 Plus with 38, 39 degrees Celsius. So tell me guys, liquid and air cooling, does it make much of a difference at all? Does your phone need to be fatter? Do you have to have that crazy sound coming through it? And do you honestly need those specs to brag about when it doesn't really do much? Having a liquid pipe in does help as you can see here, but not by that much, as you can see that these two aren't really far behind. In my mind, as long as they're not exceeding 45 degrees Celsius in your phone, you're good to go, guys. I've really enjoyed bringing you guys this wonderful N22 benchmark run, guys, and I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. I'm really impressed with the likes of all four of these devices here, guys, and if you'd like to see more of these tests on my channel, please let me know, guys. Until next time, this is Technic.